If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. Happy New Year, everyone. You're watching the Morning Swim Show on January 1st, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. We're breaking in the new year with a look back at one of the most memorable interviews I did in 2013. I got the chance to sit down with Cameron Vanderberg at the World Championships in Barcelona, Spain, where he talked about his life after the Olympics, winning the 50 breast at World Championships, and that controversial admission about doing multiple dolphin kicks at the Olympics. Hello everybody, we are live once again at Casa Arena here in Barcelona, Spain, the site of the FINA World Swimming Championships. And staying next, sitting next to me is two-time gold medalist here in Barcelona, Cameron Vandenberg from South Africa. Cameron, it's good to see you. Yeah, you too. How's it going? Jeff? All right, congratulations. Two gold medals. you got to be beyond excited about that. Yeah, no, well, I one silver and one gold, so... Oh yeah, uh... sorry, two, one silver and <laughs> one gold. You're right, you're right. I'm thinking that I'm still holding on to that Olympic gold that you got from last year. No, I'm feeling very good, I must say. I, uh, it's been a, a really troubled year obviously with a few injuries and taking so much time off after Olympic Games so for me to come through in the 100 with the time I was quite shall we say surprised um, and the 50 I mean I think I've always had the speed so it just comes down to whether or not uh, luck is on your side on the day and I'm grateful for that that I had. A lot of Olympic champions um, aren't swimming as fast as they did last year you know you're one of the few um, you, you took some time off I understand it was like almost six months yeah so I mean what do you think was the key for you to be able to continue to swim fast this year? Um, you know, I think that because the way that I swim is obviously it's more based on the speed, endurance, and, and I mean, I'm never afraid to go out fast, and I always swim from my heart, if I can, can put it that way. And as you guys can see, I always try to, to so we say, leave uh, my biggest swim for the final and just judge it through from heats to semis to final. And um, at Olympics, I was going a little bit faster, I think, through the heats of the semis um, into the final. And um, luckily, I think with 100 on the final day, I just had a bit, bit extra that I didn't have to exert in the semifinal. And, but out throughout the year, I I think um, the one thing that I never stopped doing was gymming. Uh, I mean, I've got a really great strength and conditioning coach that we do some really good work with. And so just keeping in shape in that, but out of the pool, um, you know, we were so busy with doing so much media and judging the whole, so juggling the whole sponsor commitments and your media appearances, it was, was really difficult. And when I started training in January, I was actually just so grateful to get back in the pool and, and sort of quit this, uh, as we call it, like the Hollywood scene and, yeah. and uh, just get back to what doing what I loved. And I think, um, you know, the training as well with Julia, with my training partner, it's uh, we push each other to such extremes in training and whatever we do with our dieting, our fat percentages, our, our everything, you know, the bench press, the cleans. And um, I think that maybe that in, in turn allowed me just to try and hold on to the fitness that I acquired in the Olympic year. Yeah, I think that's what a lot of you were saying that, you know, somebody like Tyler Clary had said that he gained a lot of weight and, yeah. you know, he didn't do anything. So you were you were basically trying to keep fit because you knew that you were going to come back yeah. and you knew actually what you needed to do in order to do well. Is that the case? Yes, exactly. Um, I mean, I did pick up a bit of weight. I must say I saw some pictures of myself uh, in December on the beach and <laughs> I was looking a little bit fat, but, uh, you know, I think you lose it so quickly. But the most, the most important thing is just that strength that you you can lose so quickly in the gym and the touch for the water so I mean I'd be gymming three times a week and I was in the water maybe doing 200 meters uh, twice a week so you know it wasn't training but I wasn't completely doing nothing at all right yeah but you, you look back and you probably I'm sure you don't regret that time off I mean you had a lot of fun no. I'm sure I mean you know I feel so motivated now I think um, that I've ever been actually since after the Olympic Games you know we all speak about it post Olympic depression and after the Olympic Games I did sit down and I thought to myself geez what am I gonna do now you know and I started training in January and I didn't quite know uh, what my goals were, what did I really feel like doing and, and um, you know 
coming into these championships, I think that winning the silver medal in hindsight was probably the best thing that's ever happened for me because it's reignited that fire for myself and re reignited the training ethic that I want to bring for the next three years. And instead of taking six months, I'm doing six days off and straight back into it. Well, you got the Commonwealth Games next year and you'll be racing Christian Springer, so yeah. you definitely got to be on your game because you know he will be. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, he's such a great athlete to race and such a great guy. And I mean, we've, shall we say, grown up racing each other for the last couple of years. And, you know, I've, I'm, shall we say, so happy for the guy that he's, he's found his, um, shall we say, his perfect combination with the coach and him that's working really well and, and he's swimming fast. And, you know, it's so great to see guys swimming fast. And I always believe that, you know, the... You know, it's always good to share like techniques and and um, your training regimes. And the best guy will always be the best guy. You know, um, if you put in the hard work, you know, you'll always get the outcome. At 50 breaststroke, I think everybody was hoping you'd break the world record here in yeah. Barcelona. I'm sure you were just like, oh, why do I have a tenth away? <laughs> and I, I imagine that's one, another thing that's getting you motivated for next year if you yeah. get to do the 50. I mean, it was unfortunate. Um, unfortunately, actually, after the final, I think maybe I peaked so much that I, I came down with sickness um, on the morning of the 50 breast heats. And um, still riding from the 100, I felt amazing in the morning, just cruising out. Um, I think it was 18 strokes. And the time was so easy, um, but by the evening, I already felt the sickness come on. And when I were for the finals it's full full blown congestion so you know if we look at the splits from the the 50 the first 50 of the 100 I was out in 119 and last night it was only 121 so that's that point too that you needed to get the world record and right. you know this time it didn't happen for me but um, I'm more grateful for for the luck of the touch that I had uh, just to touch Springer and have your friend Julio be on the medal say I can tell you guys were extremely emotional <laughs> yeah. up there yeah, it was one of the most amazing experiences for me, you know, and, and the only way I can compare it would be close to, to winning an Olympic gold medal. It's it's so amazing because, you know, to to you you're, there's always that saying that happiness is only truly uh, experienced when it's shared. And for me to be on the top of the podium singing my national anthem with my best friend um, for 14 years is one of the most amazing experiences that I'll ever have in my career. I can't imagine it being anything, anything different. Uh, before the World Championships, probably the big news that was coming out was, was Fina's vote to not allow the multiple dolphin kicks and not allow the underwater cameras. What are your, where are your thoughts on those? Well, I mean, for me, I've always been, shall we say, for underwater cameras, you know, and, and I think the big confusion came was that I was always speaking about these kind of things that was going on in swimming before Olympic Games. And But the only unfortunate thing is when you're coming in eighth place and you speak about something, people don't really take notice. But if you're Olympic champion and you bring it up and you admit to something that everybody's, or shall we say, that is happening in the sport, people do get up and they take notice and things start to get done. And I mean, it's always been my intention to bring that in. And, and uh, unfortunately, it looks like the vote hasn't been successful this time. But um, you know, speaking to one or two experts, they reckon that hopefully in the next year or two, uh, FINA will be strongholded into using them. So. Uh, so you think maybe not for 2016, but... Um well, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I, I can't name the source, but uh, somebody really high up in FINA has, has uh, mentioned to me that most probably in the next one to two years that uh, it should be phased in uh, automatically. So well, we'll definitely have to look for that. Uh, before we let you go, I've, have you heard anybody from anybody back in South Africa since last night? I'm sure they were <laughs> dancing in the streets for those who were able to watch. Yeah, no, it's. Uh, I mean, it's been an amazing experience, and and I think that you know the combination of of Chad and Julio and myself and everybody, we're doing such amazing things for South African swimming, and you know it's uh, it's it's one of my bigger dreams, shall we say, to see more um, African swimmers getting up there and doing well, and and I think that this is promoting the sport within South Africa, and it's not. I think a lot of people always say it's a stereotype that you know white people will swim and black people will run, but I think it's just a way that you're brought up, the culture that you're brought up within. And if we can install that culture within South Africa, that you know swimming at grassroots level is where you need to start. I'm sure that we'll uh, have a few Indian and black and white and all kinds of Olympic champions soon from South Africa. Yeah, I know it's a big problem in Africa getting getting kids to swim, and I, I'm sure they're going to continue to be inspired by all the things you guys do. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate well, Cameron, it's good to meet you in person. Person. I know we've Skyped over, over uh, Skype for many times for our interviews, so congratulations again and uh, looking forward to all your success in the future. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it, man. Our thanks to Cameron for the interview. We hope you have a good weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday with another edition of the Morning Swim Show. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.